guys. I wanted to go over some really basic airbrushing with you guys today. I hear a lot of questions on Facebook and uh, different platforms about where do I start, how do I begin, and I just wanted to really teach some uh, more advanced um, technique, but I feel like we need to cover these basics first. And uh, as always, I'm not teaching the right way, I'm just teaching the way I learned. So I'm gonna start off with the type of airbrush I'm using. There's lots of versions out there. This one's one of my favorites, the Omni 3000. It's a Badger product, Badger airbrushes. And the reason I like it is because the needle is so very exposed. See if you can see that needle up there. Forgive my paint under my fingernails there. But you can pick the paint off of the needle and that gives you a really clean, fine line all the time. And I'm spraying a lot of volume of paint, so I tend to use a, a bottle, and uh, this is called a suction feed. A gravity feed would be with the cup on top. Those work just the same, same process. You just have a different uh, configuration. Uh, the material I'm using is Imagineer Universal Paint Film. This is a very durable product, a Badger product also. And I also have Spectratex, which is really good for uh, textile, t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. This one is very durable for murals and things like that, especially if there's gonna be kids around them or touching them. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and teach you guys. Well, first of all, I'm, I'm spraying on fabric. This is a piece of Pelon. I find that fabric is a lot more forgiving when you're just learning. When you're just beginning to spray, fabric uh, is a little more simple. Um, it absorbs a lot of the overspray. You don't get bleed that blows away from the air pressure and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in and show you what a dagger stroke is. A dagger stroke is a very, very basic stroke that we use in airbrushing. And when you're spraying with an airbrush, you push down, you get your air, you pull back, you get your paint. So when you're doing a dagger stroke, remember, or any airbrushing, always start with your air, do your paint, pull back and get your paint, and push forward and stop your paint, and then let off the air. If you don't do that, so, so let's say I do a couple dagger strokes. That's a dagger stroke. Just pull back and you push forward as you move to the side. So push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward. And these are sharper because I'm up close to the fabric and you can even get closer and do sharper ones. You would use these in a lot of your detailing. Uh, a lot of any little sharp lines you're trying to make, if you're doing hair or anything like that, the, the dagger stroke up close gives you a nice fine line, but if you don't pull back and push forward and control your paint with the trigger instead of the airflow, you'll get, so I just stop the paint by letting the air off. When I start the next spot, I get a dot of paint. That will cause you trouble. So just from the get go, remember air, paint, stop the paint, stop the air. Do not control your paint by letting off the air. That will cause you trouble if you learn that um, if you learn that mistake in the beginning. So back to the dagger stroke. Dagger strokes are for detailing, but you can also use them for shading. So the same dagger stroke at a further distance from your fabric gives you this. So that's the same dagger stroke, just a little further back. So that gives you uh, shading that you can build up. Um, your dagger stroke is all your detailing, and that's all about pulling back the trigger and then pushing the trigger forward to stop the paint flow. And another technique that I used in the beginning a lot, because I was doing t-shirt airbrushing, so we're learning a lot of lettering, is to control the back and forward motion of the trigger, learning your paint. So one thing we would do is like a cursive E, on one side, we're pulling back the trigger, and on the other side, we're pushing it forward. So with a cursive E, so you get thick lines and skinny lines. Oh, I snagged my paper. That's how close I am, or I'm snagging my material. That's how close I am to it. So when you're doing these, you want to pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward. So you're getting a skinny line and a thick line together, and that's teaching you to control this trigger action. Another thing that they always wanted us to do when we were first learning how to do this airbrushing was to keep our angle the same and our height the same. That was one of the things we were learning when we were first starting to do um, t-shirt lettering. I learned it 25 years ago. So 
when you start doing these basic practices with your airbrush, this is how you control and learn your airbrush itself. Once you've learned these things, you can move into things like shielding. So you take the dagger stroke. So there's dagger stroke right there. Shielding is just grabbing some type of material that blocks it. This is actually a freehand airbrush template shield. I've had these for years. So let's say I had something I wanted to protect on one side. Shielding is still a dagger stroke, but it gives you a nice straight line right there. So these are, these are great. You can put them flat and bring them up. So you get a soft line or a sharp line. You got all the curves that you can do. So you can just use it any different way. You can continue to move your curves around. So you can do anything with a shield. Sometimes you want to mask it or some people call it frisk it. Uh, that's where you put tape on and cut your image out to truly protect what's on the other side of it. So. These are all basic tools used while airbrushing when you're learning just the airbrush itself. So if you get a chance, get your airbrush, get your airflow. Another thing with your air compressor, make sure your air compressor has a diaphragm and isn't running directly off the compressor. If it's running directly off the compressor, you'll have dots and that's the compression stroke in the compressor. So if it has a diaphragm or a tank or anything like that, That'll give you your continued airflow, and that's what you want. That, that way your line stays steady. You don't have any breaks in your lines. That's just because your air pressure is coming from a tank and not directly off a compressor. Those little bitty ones you can buy in a kit often aren't very good. Sometimes you need to upgrade just a little bit and get one that, make sure it says diaphragm. If there's a diaphragm in it, then you'll get a nice smooth line for practicing. Any compressor will work as long as you have, uh, say, 20 to 50 PSI and sustained. So practice your dagger strokes. If you start losing, see where I started losing some detail in there? I have paint that's dried on my needle. That's why I, I use this brush. I picked that needle. So do your dagger stroke. Practice it at a distance. Try building little boxes like this and then work a gradient from one end to the other. If you can get it to smooth out to where you can see where it's a, a full gradient, that's just learning how to control your airbrush. Now, this, this is gonna help you when you start actually trying to do a painting you're working on because if you haven't learned the airbrush, you can run into trouble and then you get frustrated with the airbrush. Take a few sheets, take a sheet, take a t-shirt, take something you don't need and just fill it up with paint and learn your airbrush. That's gonna help you out a lot. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, this is the first of many airbrush technique videos I'm getting ready to start putting together. And I'm not teaching the right way, I'm just teaching the way I do it. So have a great day. If you'd like to see more artwork, please visit our website, orangemoonartstudio.com. And as always, remember to like and subscribe for more videos.